probably one of the best ways I can describe it. He was dedicated to what he was doing. He never backed off the fact that God is always faithful. Evangel is a unique university. The illustrious history and rich heritage of this institution are testimonies of God's faithfulness. You could find written across every page of our history demonstrations of God's provision. As a kid, and, and I will call back on, on life before we moved to Springfield, his, his primary role was as the pastor of our church. So in 1974, when we moved here to Springfield, it was a total uh, culture shock for me in multiple ways. Uh, he was traveling about Every, every weekend, it seemed like, pretty much most weekends for his, his time, for years and years, he was out speaking and sharing about Evangel. So he started that in 1974 and continued that uh, all the way up until his, his uh, retirement in 2013. Well, Evangel, in those early 70s was really not considered uh, on the same, certainly not on the level it's on now as far as impact, because you gotta understand, in, at that time, Evangel was, wasn't even 20 years old. And so we were, we were not viewed as, as a real competitor in a college town. The, the two primary universities or schools that got most attention in Springfield were, of course, at the time, Southwest Missouri State, which is now Missouri State, and Drury College. And we were not, we were not seen as a competitor on their level. Well, at the time, the general superintendent of the Sims of God was a man by the name of Thomas Zimmerman, who was one of the key people who got Evangel off the ground. And as the general superintendent, he was on the lookout for uh, young up-and-coming pastors who were, who were really dedicated to their work and he saw my father as one of those individuals that who was uh, in his mid-30s had uh, had savvy had integrity somebody that that could be a leader here at Evangel a catalyst that changed things and there were many of them, but one I can put my finger on, because my dad would talk about this. Um, athletics is one of the best things to draw people in, because people get excited about doing things like that. Um, we had basketball, we had baseball, we had had soccer. But he knew one of the things that could raise our enrollment was to add intercollegiate football. And people did believe we should do it. I mean, there are faculty here that were totally against it, but he did two things. He started it after getting permission, and he got the right person to lead it, which was our first head coach, Denny Duron. And, and his getting out and getting, he did youth camps and everything, he was recruiting players, and within the first semester, all of a sudden, our enrollment jumped. I mean, exploded. And we became, all of a sudden, it's like, we had to put people in hotels. What a great problem, you know? And we started a $36 million capital campaign. It was one of the coolest moments as I sat in a fundraising dinner and they unveiled what this whole campus would begin to look like. More than anyone, he gave his life to build Evangel. Um, every academic building on the campus. Many of the dorms were built during his 40-year um, tenure as president. I mean, every building project that we had called for people to, to, to uh, put skin in the game. I mean, when we, when we came here, I mean, I got pictures on my wall, and you've seen them. I mean, the pictures, this whole campus was just, it was all barracks. His faith never wavered, and there were really great, there were great benchmark moments 
where God met this university through him and his dedication. I'm grateful for that, because not everybody has that story. I knew Dr. Spence years before I came. He was not pres the president when I was a student here. He came short, I think, the year after I graduated. But over the years, especially um, when I came back into Christian higher education, we would be at conferences, and then when I became president of Vanguard, we would be in several meetings a year. And so I, I knew him, certainly not as well as I came to know him after coming back to Evangel, but you know I've known of him and have known him for years. It was fascinating that the week before his stroke, which was totally unexpected, um, he was presented a key to the city of Springfield. And I remember, I think it was in December, Mayor Ken McClure called me and said, what, what do you think about um, presenting a key to the city to President Spence? He said, there hasn't been a key to the city presented to anyone in the last 10 years. And I immediately said, I couldn't think of anyone who would be more deserving of that honor. It's not about position that makes you a leader. Now your position gives you some credibility because you've earned those spots, hopefully. Uh, but it's your presence that leaves people wanting to be with you more. People just wanted to sit beside you. And he was kind to people. He was never mean. He was never vindictive. You know, and I've had to learn that uh, vengeance is the Lord's. And, and he could rest in that. And so because he was at peace with that, he was going to treat people with respect whether he received it or not. The other thing I think is important to know, one of the things that convinced me, um, maybe convinced isn't the right word, but, but drew me back was when, when I visited and realized that the heart, and I sometimes talk to students about the deep DNA of the institution. Um, he was the guardian of the mission of, of the university. And so what, what was at the very heart of Evangel that you hear alumni talk about, even from the first graduating class, he, he was the guardian of that. And that, that mission never went off track and that and that is still the heart of evangel today in equipping men and women to be the presence of Christ in the world and um, and I think it's rare to find an institution that hasn't somewhere in its history kind of gone in a different direction and and that was because of of who he was I mean he he lived and breathed what evangel was about and guarded it so well and my prayer is that that um, 50 years from now, uh, whoever might be interviewing um, would still be talking about the DNA of, of Evangel.